I'm in Paradise, Pennsylvania at Price's Auto Salvage. This is Lancaster County. It's Amish country. I'm here specifically looking for replacement door handles for my Chevy Astro van, which broke recently. The moment I walked into this yard, I knew this is exactly where I needed to be. Walking in here, and honestly, Amish country, is like going back in time. There's cars tucked away in different corners of this yard that I haven't seen on the road in, in years, in decades even. Let me show you around. One of the first things I noticed while walking through this yard were the number of Pontiacs that are all over the place. Saturns too, a lot of Saturns. Towards the back section of the yard, I'm seeing this blue SUV out here, and that might be an Isuzu Amigo. I'm gonna try to work my way through there, check it out, get a closer look. I'm making my way over to the Amigo, and I stumble upon this. Looks like an early 90s Grand Prix. Has the 3.4 liter, what's that, probably 200 or maybe 210 horsepower. Look how clean that looks, man. It's almost like it doesn't belong here. Classic W body with the door handles on the pillar here. And wow, look at that. I'm shocked, I really am. Oh, it smells fresh too. Can't quite see the odometer, but it looks like 122. The inside looks really nice. Uh, yeah, it's kind of sad. A pair of baby shoes and baby lotion. The interior is really well put together. Clean and tidy. Look at that. Is that classic W body? I mean, I've seen that over and over again. And out back, man, look how nice it is. I always loved these brake lights. I mean, that's what you got with the sports model, right? With the, the check pattern, the hex pattern in there. Dig the wing on it. Still got the right wheels. Pretty cool. And over here, another Pontiac Firebird this time. I can't even guess what year this might be. I remember when they went to this nose, this beak nose, never liked it, not at all. I'm surprised to see it here. Usually these things are so sought after, but yeah, there's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing good here. Always thought the wing was pretty cool how they shaped it into the rear deck. I thought Firebirds at this era were all V8s, so it's probably a 350. It's kind of cool to see it here. And over here, check this out, way in the corner, a Mercury Cougar. Man, this car, these came out at the end of the, the Sporty Coupe era, sometime in the early 90s. Man, the Sporty Coupes prior to that, they were hot, man. Every manufacturer seemed to have a, a Sporty Coupe. You know, 130 horsepower, 110 horse, somewhere in that range. The Cougars came out and it was, it was just dying off at that point. Nobody really had any interest in them. A friend at work had one of these. It was a V6. It was nice. It was a, a pleasant car. It was black just like this one. This one's got the, the Cougar wheels on it still. Oh, it's the V6 model. Looks nice. You know, I think they're still attractive. I've always liked the little bubble brake lights that they have going on. This side is like battered up a little bit explains why it's here for sure but I haven't seen any of these on the road I mean I don't know how durable reliable they are but I mean I haven't seen them in a long long time and I'm getting closer to the Zusu and you know what it's not it's not an Zusu at all that's a big letdown I'm a little disappointed Land Rover come on what a pump fake but since we're here let's check it out I don't know doesn't do anything for me. Goodbye. So just a couple cars down from the Land Rover, I saw this roof line and I knew right away, I knew what it was. Look at that, a Volvo, probably a 740. And where are we at? Yep, there it is, 740. These things are durable, reliable. These things never die. And I'm shocked to see it here. It seems the one weak link on these cars are the, the relays for the electronics, the ignition, the, the fuel injection and so forth. This one, wow, 273,000 miles. So way down here, you pull this out and you can get to the relays that are in there. Some relays you can't even get anymore. And that's the death blow to these cars. It's a shame too, man, because these things, these things just last forever. It's a shame something so simple like that can be the death blow to these cars. Love that! Look how cool that is. There looks like uh, there looks like a lot of good parts on these cars. These door panels, for instance, uh, down here, this always breaks off. The switches break. Uh, I love how they 
inset the door handle, the door release, uh, so you don't get hurt in case of an accident. Everything on here is just simple and easy and tried and true, robust and reliable. Yeah, missing the door cover. Oh, there it is down there. Even the fabric on the seats, I mean, it's dirty obviously, but look, it doesn't even look like it's been worn at all. Yeah. And same with the back. How I guess that's sun faded and uh, the armrest down here has been hidden. Oh, yeah, look at that! Interesting, that's cool. I saw the owner's manual inside that Volvo, it said 1987, and I'm surprised by how nice that car still looks after all these years. Right down the aisle of that Volvo is this check it out, it's the Chrysler LH. Remember that? Oh, not just one, there's two, there's three. <laughs> Check these out. These were made in Newark, Delaware, at the Newark assembly plant. These were close to my house. I mean, I saw these out on the road even before, I mean, they were made public. I've always liked these. On um, this one's a Dodge, obviously. It's got the white dash, check it out. I always thought these were pretty cool looking. Chrysler had an LHS version, which was the full size model of the LH cars. I still look for one. I'm always out there looking, seeing if I can find one for sale in the right condition at the right price. I've always adored these cars. Uh, it's kind of fun to see them here too. Oh look, there's a, a second generation LH. Let's take a look. Let's get a little closer. Is that a 300? Oh, there's a second one. Look at that. They're everywhere. They're multiplying. So where else in the world would you find What's that? One, two, three, five LH cars side by side. Yeah, that's a 300 model. I mean, the original 300 cars from the 50s had this large, it was like a trapezoid shaped grill. I felt like a little disappointed when, when Chrysler decided to put this little grill on the 300 models. And check this out, Cadillac Eldorado, early 90s, I'm guessing. And the body looks good, but I'll guarantee the reason it's here, North Star. You know the engine went bad on it. Head gaskets, starter, whatever. Oh, who, would, who would lock it? But these things have no value, but I like them, man. I really do. And I was bidding on one. It was, I think it was cars and bids or, or maybe it was bring a trailer. It was a beautiful burgundy color. Low miles, like 60 some thousand miles. It, it was in Scottsdale, Arizona. The bidding stopped at $3,000 and it was in impeccable condition. I think these are cool. This is my style too, man. I like these a lot. It's just a shame about the engine. And over here, I see this three door. You know, that's a Saturn. Check that out. I still remember the ad that Saturn had for these. It was a paper ad where they showed some dude with a Sawzall chopping up a, was it a coupe maybe? And putting in this door. Look how easy that is to get in. I mean, that makes so much sense. I mean, just great ideas, great ideas. Oh, it's in the manual too. Uh, looks like it's a digital odometer. Can't really see what's going on. It's kind of cool to see it here. And yet another LH car. This one looks clean enough and nice enough that it could just drive right out of the yard. And over here, I spy a box Chevy. Let's get a close look. Love that front. Look how cool that is with the aerodynamic headlights. When this came out, I think it was 89 that they went from the individual halogen lights to the, the flush mounted aerodynamic lights. I dig the two-tone. Very cool. And the burgundy interior. Oh my goodness. Love this. Though, you know, somewhere around 100,000 miles, these things just gave up and this one is 107 and you know it's a 305 this might be the 4.3 liter Whew. yuck kind of cool to see it here though you know there's some good parts on this car and other caprice classics can be kept running and on the road with with examples like this
And this is a cool find. Doesn't look like anything special, just a brick, right? A, a Ford F-150 from late 80s, I guess, until you come over to the side. And then you see that it has the flare side bed, which is pretty cool. I mean, this is what trucks were back in the, what, 30s, 40s, 50s, even into the 60s. They had the flare side. And then they went flat sided. When these came back into production and reintroduced, I thought these were cool. I remember my dad fussing and complaining about it. Oh, the bed's so small. You can't get any value out of that. That's not what a truck's supposed to be like. But I like it. I think they're really cool. Oh man, this one has given up its parts to keep others going. And remember what I was saying earlier about being a lot of Saturns in this yard? Here are two views. These are two of about a dozen that I've seen already. And a couple more Pontiacs as well. Burgundy one over here is a coupe. We got a Thunderbird, which is cool to see. And then a purple Grand Am. How cool is that? And then sometime around the year 2000, Mitsubishi had the Diamante. This was supposed to be the nicest, most luxurious Mitsu that you could buy at that time. These were nicer, bigger than the Galant. And I mean, these were priced like BMW territory, like three series, mid thirties. You know, that's a lot of money. I mean, for a Mitsubishi. Mitsu really didn't have a big name at that time either. They really weren't prominent and they're just dying off now. There's not much left to them anymore. It's pretty roomy, pretty spacious. Kind of sad to see the kid pictures and the baby seat back here. Ironically, right next to the nicest, most expensive Mitsubishi you could buy at the turn of the century is the nicest, most expensive Millennia you could buy from the Mazda dealership. I always thought these were pretty sharp looking. It was these and the 929s that were like, they were the nice Mazdas. This one is like, look how clean it is. Like somebody really cared for this until it ended up here. And that right there would explain why it's here. And there's the Diamante. And check it out, another Diamante. That makes like 25% of the total world production of Mitsu Diamantes are sitting right here in this yard. Classic green for the era. 76,000 miles, I'm shocked. Still has the factory radio, lots of air fresheners. And it's locked in the back. Goodbye, Diamante. Finally, here's an Astro. This is really why I came here. I'm gonna check it out and see if I can get any good parts off of this. It's open air seating, pretty cool, I like that. One of the door latches that broke on mine is the inside driver's side on the rear, and there is no way I'm gonna get a hold of that one. Yet another Astro van, and looks like it's backed up in a way that I cannot get to the door handles. Yeah, it's gonna be a struggle to get there. I'm gonna keep looking around, see if I can find another van. Interior-wise, yeah, again, it's all picked apart. Surprising. Same gray interior, same three rows. This one has rear air conditioning. That's pretty cool. There's a set of headlights waiting to be used. Ow. Uh, kind of funny seeing it with just headlights on and no grill or no bumper, nothing on the front. And on my hunt for another Astro van, I come across an Honda Element. These things are quirky weird. I kind of dig them more now than what I did when they first came out. It's a two-door, four-door, I'm not sure what it is. This one's a mess. Look at that. I was kind of wondering why it would be here. I mean, you don't find Hondas in the junkyard very often. There was one on Bring a Trailer that recently sold for $30,000. This one has a lot of good parts on it. I mean, exterior-wise, looks great. And being a Honda, I mean, what else could be wrong with it? over on Ford Row. A lot of LS's, but I see this, sweetie. Look at that. Town car. Oh, love this. At some point, I got to get me one of these. The prices are still fairly reasonable, too. And I love this era. Actually, a little earlier. I like the earlier, uh, early 90s model. Here's a later town car from, what, 2000 era. Some Grand Marquis. Another Lincoln. Lincoln. There's some cool cars here. Another Astro van. I'm happy to find that. Looking for 
Yeah, let's get this open and... Well, that's not gonna work. All right, so I found four Astro Vans in the yard. I couldn't get the parts that I needed off of any of them. I came across this. This is a Suburban with the barn doors. The inside door handle down here on this inside door looks like it's the same exact door handle on my Astro. I took a few minutes, I pulled that off, put it in my backpack. I'm gonna go up and pay for that door handle. I pulled off two other door handles and a and door latch mechanism as well, as spares for my car. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pay for that. I'm gonna wrap up the video here. If you need parts for your vintage car or your antique car, check out Prices Auto Salvage here in Paradise, Pennsylvania. A lot of cool cars, a lot of cool parts out here. Great guys to work with. Uh, I had fun. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you next time.